everyone, this is Midnight Mommy. So for this tutorial, ituturo ko sa inyo ang Impulse Momentum Theorem. So yung Impulse Momentum Theorem nang galing to sa Newton Second Law of Motion. So kung matatandaan niyo yung Newton Second Law of Motion, sinasabi doon that the acceleration of a body is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to its mass. So galing to sa Newton Second Law na madalas natin siyang isulat as F is equal to MA. Na kung matatandaan niyo yung ating acceleration, kung napanood niyo yung video ko about sa acceleration, di ba dinidefine natin ang acceleration as the change in velocity over time. Okay, so yun yung delta V over T. So kung isa-substitute ko rito yung equation ng acceleration in, in this equation, so magiging ganito siya. So F is equal to M times delta V over T. Okay, so yung A, pinalitan ko lang ito. So, itong equation natin, pwede ko pa siyang i-rewrite in another way. So, ang gagawin ko this time, yung t ko cross-multiply ko siya dito sa f. Okay? So, magiging ganito siya. Magiging f t is equal to m delta t. So, sa physics, itong product ng force times the time, yung f t, ang tawag natin dito is the impulse. And then, itong m delta v, ang tawag natin dito is momentum. So, ano ang unit natin ng impulse? So, ang unit natin ng impulse dito is newton second kasi based doon sa unit ng force which is newton and then unit ng time which is second. And then sa momentum naman, ang unit na ginagamit natin is kilogram meter per second. So, careful kayo ha. Kilogram meter per second, hindi kilogram meter per second squared. So, in this case kasi, yung kilogram is yun yung ginagamit natin na unit for mass and then yung meter per second, yun yung standard unit na ginagamit natin for speed or for velocity. So sinasabi lang dito na kung ano yung value ng ating impulse, yun din ang equal din siya dun sa value ng ating momentum. So, yung impulse momentum theorem, pwede natin ito gamitin para i-explain sa atin kung bakit yung ating egg, okay, so kung meron kayong fresh egg at nabagsak nyo siya sa floor, definitely mababasag yan. Okay, so ano yung reason for that? So pwede natin itong gamitin yung equation natin ng impulse and momentum. Okay, so di ba kanina, given tayo ng equation ng impulse momentum theorem na Ft is equal to mv. Now, ang gagawin ko dito is that i-relate ko yung ating impact time dun sa impact force. So yung impact force, ito yung force na experience ng ating object once it hits something. So yung T naman, ito, ito yung tinatawag natin na impact time. So pag sinabi natin impact time, ito yung time na in contact yung dalawang object natin na nagkaroon ng collision. Okay? So gagawin ko is para, para ma-relate ko yung dalawa, kailangan yung isa sa kanila, ililipat ko dun sa other side of the equation. So ang gagawin ko for this case is that i-divide ko to both sides by T kasi ang goal natin is paghihiwalayan natin yung F and T. Kasi hindi nyo sila pwedeng i-compare kapag they are on the same side of the equation. So, kailangan nandun siya sa different sides of the equation. Ibig sabihin, yung isa nasa left side of the equation and then yung isa naman is nasa right side of the equation. So, i -re -re ko tong equation na to as F is equal to mv over t. Okay, so based dito sa pwesto ng mga variables natin, tatandaan nyo kapag yung isang variable is nasa baba, okay, like this one sa t, ibig sabihin nun inversely proportional siya. So, pag sinabi natin inversely proportional, meron siyang uh, magkabaligtad na relationship. So, in this case, pwede nating sabihin that the force is inversely proportional to the impact time. So, meaning kapag mas mataas ang impact time mo, mas mababa ang force, ang impact force. And kapag mas maliit naman ang ating impact time, mas tumataas yung value ng ating impact force. So, let's go back dito sa example ng ating fresh egg. In general... Lahat ng objects na hard, um, nagpo-provide lang sila ng short impact time. Ibig sabihin, kapag mayroong another object na tumama sa isang hard object, maiksi lang yung time of contact nila. Okay? So, time of contact. Ibig sabihin, yun yung time na magkadikit sila. Now, kapag sinabi naman natin ng mga soft objects, katulad ng mga foam, they provide longer impact time. So, ibig sabihin, kapag mayroong object na tumama sa kanila, mas matagal na in contact sila dun sa object. So sa case sa ating fresh egg, yung ating wooden floor, since hard object to, ibig sabihin, it only provides a small impact time. Ibig sabihin, maiksi lang yung oras na nagkaroon ng contact yung egg at saka yung floor. Kaya ang nagiging effect niya is, 
tumataas yung ating impact force. Now, sa case naman, dito sa second example, na sinalo yung egg. Okay, so typically yung egg at saka yung hand natin, um, since yung hand natin is softer, obviously compared to the wooden floor, ang nangyayari dyan, mas matagal na in contact yung egg sa ating hands. Okay, kaya ang nangyayari dyan, tumataas yung ating impact time. So dahil mataas yung ating impact time, higing mababa ngayon yung ating impact force. So this time, gamitin naman natin yung impulse momentum theorem sa pag-solve ng isang physics problem. So Jennifer, who has a mass of 50 kilograms, is riding at 35 meters per second in her red sports car when she must suddenly slam on the brakes to avoid hitting a deer crossing the road. She strikes the airbag that brings her body to a stop in 0.5 seconds. So what average force does the seat belt exert on her? So, sulat ko na natin yung mga given. So, meron tayo ditong mass na 50 kilograms. And so, next given tayo dito ng velocity, 35 meters per second. Now, ito yung kanyang initial velocity. So, tatawagin natin tong V1. Okay, so, initially, yung ating car is nag-move at this speed. So, that's 35 meters per second. So, as then, sinabi dito na si Jennifer, she suddenly slammed on the brakes. Okay? So, since nagkaroon ka ng, nag-apply ka ng brakes, okay, so mangyayari dito, eventually mag stop obviously yung ating car. So, magkakaroon tayo dito ng V2 na value which is equal to 0. Okay, kasi nga nag-stop na yung car. So, she strikes the airbag that brings her body to a stop. Okay, so, yung time natin, yung, ito yung ngayon yung tinatawag natin na impact time na yung ating um, rider, so in this case si Jennifer, yan yung time na in contact siya with the airbag. So that is 0 0.5 seconds. So the question is, what average force does the seatbelt exert on her? So ang hinahanap natin dito ngayon is your impact force. Okay, so kung gagamitin natin yung impulse momentum theorem, so meron tayong Ft is equal to m delta v. Okay, so again, yung delta v natin is compute natin by getting the difference of V2 and V1. So, isusubtract nyo lang siya. Isusubtract nyo lang yung V2 nyo at saka yung V1 nyo. Okay, so kung gagawin natin yan, meron tayong 0 minus 35 meters per second. So, this one will become negative 35 meters per second. Okay, so um, since hinahanap natin is the impact force, so divide natin both sides of the equation by the time para makancel dito sa left side yung time. So, meron tayong F is equal to M delta V over T. So, kung sa substitute natin to, this is 50 kilograms times the change in velocity which is negative 35 meters per second. And then, hindi divide natin siya dun sa time natin which is 0 0.5 seconds. So, kung nating sagot is um, negative 3,500 newtons. Okay, so bakit siya negative? So remember, na tinatanong dito is the seat belt. So the force exerted by the seat belt. So obviously, um, para mas stop yung motion ni Jennifer, kailangan yung seat belt mag exert ng force na opposite sa initial direction niya. So kung ang direction ni Jennifer is moving forward, so dapat yung direction ng force exerted by the seat belt should be backward. Okay, kasi para mapigilan niya yung motion ni Jennifer. Okay, so yun yung ibig sabihin ng negative sign. Now, if Jennifer had not been wearing her seatbelt and had not an airbag, then the windshield would have stopped her head in 0.002 seconds. What average force would the windshield have exerted on her? Okay, so this time, same scenario lang tayo, except that yung impact time ngayon natin mas lumiit. Okay, so kukunin ulit natin yung ating mga values kanina. So yung mass natin again is 50 kilograms. And then yung ating change in velocity that is negative 35 meters per second. Pero this time, yung ating time is 0.002 seconds. So kailangan natin hanapin yung impact force. Now, gagamitin ko ulit yung equation na ginamit ko kanina. So F is equal to M delta V over T. So based pa lang dito sa equation, magkakaroon na kayo ng prediction somehow kung ano yung magiging trend ng value nyo. So since alam natin na yung ating impact time is inversely proportional to your impact force, so ibig sabihin, since mas lumiit yung time natin, kasi kanina 0 0.5 seconds, ngayon naging 0.002 seconds na lang siya. So mas lumiit siya. 
So, kung mas na-meet yung time, that means yung ating impact force is dapat mas mataas yung value na makukuha natin. So, i-check natin kung tama yung ating prediction. So, kung isa-substitute natin to meron tayong 50 kilograms times negative 35 meters per second divided by yung ating time na 0.002 seconds. Okay, so makukuha po natin value dito is equal to negative 875,000 newtons. So kung isa scientific notation nyo to sa so calculator, this is uh, negative 8.75 times 10 raised to the um, fifth power newtons. Okay, so you can imagine ano, sobrang laki na ating impact force. And ito actually yung reason kung bakit talaga dapat we should practice safety kasi yung mga seat belts, it is designed para tulungan tayo na makasurvive sa mga unexpected na mga accidents like this one. So in this case, napakalaking tulong nun kasi again, yung mga seat belts na yun, nagpo-provide sila ng large impact time. Kaya yung impact force na pwedeng ma-experience sa katawan natin is relatively small. So hindi siya ganun um, kalakas yung impact na mararamdaman natin. Okay? So hindi masyada magkakaroon ng damage sa katawan natin. You can imagine itong 875,000 newtons. Sobrang laking value na. And that is enough actually to kill you. So from this equation, pwede natin sabihin na your change in velocity is actually directly proportional to your impact force. Ibig sabihin, mas mataas ang change ninyo ng inyong velocity, mas mataas din yung value na ating impact force. Kaya nga ba sa mga cases ng mga car accidents, actually yung mga investigators, depende doon sa damage somehow, medyo nagkakaroon na sila ng idea kung ano yung vehicle na mabilis yung takbo. Pero kapag malaki yung damage, ibig sabihin mataas yung impact force. And bakit tumaas yung impact force? Well, it's because of this one. Dahil tumaas din yung kanyang change in speed. Ibig sabihin, mabilis talaga yung takbo niya before talaga siya kuminto upon collision. So sana po nakatuloy na malaki sa inyo tong um, tutorial na to. So abangan niyo po yung next tutorial ko. I-discuss ko naman doon yung law of conservation of momentum.